Yo, 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 what's up? This is General from JJ Rush. I got you the peach capital of the state. All right, I, had, uh, I got my Benelli hat on today. Uh, I got to get some new covers made. All right, so check this out. Last time we talked about atomization with uh, your paint gun and how to bust up the material. This time we're going to talk about removing paint to get down to the substrate. All right, so what are we talking about? So you have different types of stripping. All right, you have uh mechanical media and chemical all right soda blasted is not a recommended approved method anymore back in the 70s and the 80s and early 90s it was it was okay and then they realized they had a lot of problem and i don't care how much you clean it i don't care how bad i don't care how much stuff you spray on it to neutralize it you're not going to get in ever cracking crevices it's, it's basically impossible unless you take the whole vehicle and submerge it completely into a bath tank and let it set overnight and then pull it back out. Then possibility you it's possible that you can get it ever crevice crevices. So mechanical. The first thing you do before you start sanding on anything is what? Clean. Clean, 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 clean. You clean the panel. If you have to take it and spray it down with degreaser, purple power, mean green, whatever. Go to a car wash, wash it off with a pressure washer. If you have a hot genie, use that. Um, I was fortunate enough when I, I kind of thought ahead when I built my water heater, when I put my water stove in, my water stove boiler outside heats my house and my shop and all my hot water. Well, also I put in a second hose bib. So when I hook up a pressure washer to it, I got 180, 190 degree water coming right out and that degreases everything. What, the reason why you wash it before you sand it because if once you start sanding you're impregnating everything on the top layer into the bottom layer and there's no way that you can get it out because i see guys on here well i, I done this and i sanded it and then i primed it and i done this and then i got blisters and i don't know why and i got that and there's a thousand reasons why it could be but then you ask you know well what did you do tell me what you did well, I've done this, 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 and this. Did you wash it? Yeah, I washed it before I before I sprayed it. Yeah, but did you wash it before? N no, I just wiped it down and went ahead and started sanding. That might be a problem. It might not be a problem, but I have found if you take a notebook and every time you go in the booth, you write down everything on a piece of notebook, everything. The temperature, the music you was listening to, what you eat last night, what you eat this morning, uh, everything. You write everything down. Your humidity, your air pressure, your gun setup. You write it all down because you can't remember it all. Then you write every bit of it down on a piece of paper. And if something happens, then you have a reference point because if something happens and you don't write it down, you, you're trying to scramble it, and I guarantee you're going to miss something. You're going to miss something, all right? You're going to miss something. So you got mechanical stripping, all right? So clean, remove paint with 80 grit. Avoid 36 and 40. Avoid anything rougher than four, uh, rougher than 80. At least two deep of scratches. The pros of mechanical stripping is removes old body work and surface rough. Safe, safest way to do it yourself. The cons are time consuming and labor. That's basically it. Somebody says, well, I can do that myself. Well, if you spent six hours sanding it down to get that panel stripped out, you got six hours. Um, if you charge $75 an hour, um, so you got six hours in it and $75 an hour, you can call Carolina Dust's Blaster and he comes out and he charges $200 an hour and in an hour, him and Brandon can really knock out stuff. They might have 10 panels done in an hour and you couldn't even get one done in six. Media blasting, a dry method is preferred and has become more popular and should be sanded with a machine 180 to one, uh, 120 to 180 grit to remove the paint. Slightly nib can be left behind to remove the remaining rust in the areas that the sand spot blaster or, or uh, sand spot blaster or wire brush. Pros, safe way to remove paint, will not pit or braid metal. Cons, does not remove rust. Well, a lot of things have changed since this book was made. Um, when when Caroline does this blaster blast, they leave a 1.5 to a 2.0 tooth. Uh, so there's no needing going back and sanding it. 
and it removes all the rust even down into the pits all right then you have chemical stripper aircraft stripper must be neutralized with water and it must be environmentally compliant the pros the best for regional paint cons messy job leaves metal leaves metal smooth does not remove rust slow uh slow for cars of multiple paint jobs and does or does not remove filler also you have dipping where where the car you can send it off and have it chemically dipped the whole thing can be dipped uh chemically stripped bare metal all right sandblasting uh the pros uh which is it's actually uh very fine sand it's, it's it's like uh it's not sand it's like crushed glass it almost looks like beach sand um the pros great sin, gets in the pit after the paint is stripped um best frame best for frames and heavy gauge metal um it also method is per, uh perfect for spot blasting cons several potential you have potential for warping this method also has been potential to damage the vehicle that means if you don't have somebody that knows what they're doing and they got a hood on a Chevelle and they're stripping it and they're just going to town and they're building up too much heat, you might as well just call Jason from Automail Direct and order a new one because there's not enough love and money you're going to be able to fix it. So not all media blasters are created equal. Uh, you have to find somebody that knows what they're doing. All right. All right. Let's talk about once it's in bare metal or substrate. Oxidation begins in 30 minutes with 50% humidity outside. When left unprotected, bare metal begins to oxidize or flash rust within 30 minutes at 50% rate of humidity. Rust is a living organism, all right? It grows immediately. If you put your hand on it, barehanded when it's when you're blasted and you do like that and you come back within 20, 30 minutes, you will see the handprint on there. That's from the salt, the sweat, and everything on there. So here's the thing. To, to treat metal treat to treat the metal the bare metal you can do several different things you can spray epoxy on it within 30 minutes a corrosion resistant epoxy like cre 321 you can put it on there as immediately after you get through blasting people say man it took me 12 hours to clean that car it was so daggone and so much sand and stuff well i do it all dry i don't do it wet because i have bad experience with the wet so i do it dry well Mike and Brandon, once once they blow it out, they they blow everything out outside in the yard or in the driveway. It is ninety five percent super clean by the time I get it, and then I blow it off one more time. I blow, I make sure it's blowed off before I bring it in the booth, and then I tape it up if I need to be taped up. Uh, if and then I go ahead and spray epoxy. I put several coats on it. All right. If it's going to set for just a few minutes, then what you need to do is you need to get you some SX579 and SX520, which is metal treat and metal conditioner. It mixes one-to-one -one with water. I know what I just said. It mixes with water. I know it float. It threw me a curveball when I was told to. All right? You mix it up. You spray it down. You let it soak for 15 minutes, and you wash it off with hot water. That's the problem. The first time I ever did it, I did it with cool water and it turned the coffee brown. And I thought, oh Lord, I'm fixing to have this thing blasted all over again. The chemical reaction, it happened, but since it was cold water, it turned brown. If I would have done it in hot water, it would have turned like a galvanizing look. So what that makes is it makes a zinc phosphate over the bare metal. Now that's not going to give you a long period of time, but that might give you a day and that gets down into the cracks and crevices. If I couldn't epoxy it today, I spray it, I do that, I let it dry, and then tomorrow I can put the epoxy on it. All right? Here's the thing about CRE. See a lot of guys, they say, well, you know, I use this and I use that and I use that and had, I've had problems with CRE. Well, here, here's, here's the thing. Not everything in the CRE piece sheet is in the piece sheet because it was designed for structural steel stuff. It wasn't designed for automotive use but we have found out that it is super phenomenal product on bare metal so we're bringing it over all right so ppg realized that they needed something for the cre side or they needed something for the restoration side because everybody's using so much of the daggone cre so they came out with the vp 
2050. All right, I still use CRE. So here's the deal with CRE. It's 72.6% solid. It's corrosion resistance with a 2.1 tip. It says on the P sheet that you got to use acetone. I don't use acetone. I use regular reducer. It only comes in one type of hardener. And the one type of hardener it comes in is this right here. Comes out right there. It's only one, one, one speed, all right? So you have to regulate the flash point with reducer. So if it's 90 degrees outside, I use 90 degree, 98 degree reducer. If it's 70 degrees, I use 85. Try to slow it down. So when you put the first coat of, we get the 10 minute mark. So when you're treating bare metal and you put the epoxy on and you put the CRE on, I mix it up two to one, all right? I go in there and I mix it two to one to one and I reduce it by one with reducer. I go in there and spray it with a one eight tip or a two five and I go in there and I put a nice even wet coat on there. Then I leave. CRE is kind of tricky. A lot of reasons why uh, people have issues with it is they don't really know how it works. And then when it fails, they don't have the time or the money to try to figure out what happened. And then they either don't call out to nobody because most of the time paint companies say it's the person's fault. It's your fault. How many people, how many people have sprayed product and did everything by the piece sheet exactly the way it says and then call the manufacturer or call the jobber and they look at you and go, well, you done something wrong. Ain't nobody else complained about it. Bull crap. So I'm the only idiot in the bunch. Okay. So people get frustrated and get aggravated. And then they say, hey, man, I tried to use this product and this garbage. What do y'all use? And then somebody says, hey, use this. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then somebody, and then they use that. And then once they get using that, they say, oh, yeah, I had, I had good, 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 good luck with that. I can't stay, I can't spray that stuff over there. The reason why you can't spray it is because you don't know how it works. And the reason why you don't know how it works is because nobody helped you. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help what I've been told, told that's not every time in the P sheet. So when you spray CRE, you spray CRE and you let it dry to completely to touch. All right. Once it's dry, then you put the second coat on. Then you let it dry to completely touch. Then you put the second, then you put the next coat and the next coat and the next coat. And then you let it dry and then you let it dry. You don't touch it. You just let it. And then you can set it to the side. You can't put it in the sunlight because it don't have UV protected. So, because it'll turn like a chalky yellow color, but it, it's still okay, but it's still, it turns like a yellowish. Then, then you go block it. You block the CRE with a buck 50 or a buck 80. And then you do all your body work on it. And then you mix up some C, mix some CRE up and then you spray it again. You let it dry to touch and you keep digging. I found out that that works the best way for me. And people say, man, that stuff shrinks like nobody's business. Well, I've done it in a cup and it, it's minimum shrinkage, okay? Everything shrinks. When it dries, it shrinks. If everybody says, man, that stuff don't, man, I sprayed this product and have zero shrinkage. Yeah, just like when I jump into cold water too, I got zero shrinkage too. Yeah, okay, whatever. Look like a snapping turtle trying to get back in its shell. Everything shrinks. If it's drying, everything shrinks. That's why when it says the wet bed, that's when they say when you put it on wet and the wet film, the film build uh, or the mill build wet is 2.5. <clears throat> and then it says dry film build 1.5. Well, that means it lost one mill between drying. Everything shrinks. All right. So that's that. All right. So the metal cleaner, the 579, is the metal cleaner. It cleans and stops rust and will remove slightly rust suffers. Now, it ain't going to take out a major stuff. Leaves a rust color phosphoric coating, but it is not rust. See, it's right there. It's right there. It says it in the book. All right. Leaves a rust color phosphate, but it coating is not rust. 520 metal conditioner is a conversion coat, leaves a blue-green zinc phosphate coating, added corrosion resistance. Bare steel, reminder, bare steel to rust in 30 minutes and 50% humidity. Aluminum parts, if you're doing aluminum, you have to use SX-533 aluminum cleaner, and you have to use SX-503 
or excuse me, SX553 aluminum cleaner and SX503 aluminum conditioner. It deep cleans aluminum, removes oxidation of purge surface for uh, a next coating. The aluminum conditioner conversion coat leaves a gold color, gold color coating added color corrosion resistance. Woo! Reminder, aluminum starts oxidizing within eight hours of sanding. So if you're sanding aluminum and you're coming back to prep, if you want, in eight hours, it's going to oxidize and you're going to have to clean it. All right. So that is uh, what Tech Tuesday today is about metal preparation and metal treatment and sandblasting and mechanical stripping. I'm at the 15 minute mark. Um, some guys was asking about that. So that's how I do it. Um, and whenever I have to go back, I fall back to this right here, uh, to, this, to this black notebook that I've, I've put together. So everybody, I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, today is uh, Tuesday, November the 9th. At lunchtime today, we're gonna give away the, the aluminum suit. Um, we picked two people. Um, and I appreciate every single one of you. Um, don't worry about the man up the road and don't worry, man, about the down the road. Sweep off your own front porch before you worry about anybody else. I appreciate every single one of you. Remember, go to alphapigments.com uh, to the uh, to the e-commerce store if you want shirts, hats, uh, stuff like that. Um, and then everything, all the all the profits made off of the shirts, uh, I received no profits whatsoever. Every bit of that money is donated to my son's scholarship at Randolph Community College in Asheboro, North Carolina. If you would not, if you don't want to buy no shirt or no hat or anything like that, that's totally fine. But if you would like to donate uh, to his scholarship, we're trying to reach ten thousand dollars to make it a forever six. His scholarship's forever six. We're trying to make that. It's coming up on the three-year anniversary in January. Um, so uh, just keep everybody mindful. Um, don't worry about what everybody else is doing on. People worrying about things that's not even really important. Okay? All right? Um, trust me. Uh, back in the day, I, I used to worry about trivial things. Um, I don't worry about trivial things no more. Um, it, it's just not worth it. It's a waste of time and effort and energy. Uh so it doesn't cost a dime to be kind to folks. I appreciate every single one of you. Remember when I say, don't worry about the man down the road. Don't worry about the man down up the road. Sweep off your own front porch. Put God first. And let loose and drag. Peace, love, and chicken grace. I'm out.